What would you say if I told you that standing with your legs apart, your hands on your hips for just two minutes could boost your confidence, increase your testosterone levels, and even improve your chances of success in a job interview? And what would you say if I told you that after making headlines across the world and being adopted by schools and workplaces, the researchers that first claimed this found themselves in a lot of controversy when other scientists weren't able to replicate their studies. Not really cool, is it? Reproducibility, being able to replicate and verify another's findings, is the cornerstone of scientific research. This story opened Pandora's box and kick-started a widespread awareness of what is now known as the, re the, re the reproducibility crisis. This crisis has been recognized in all academic fields and potentially undermines thousands of findings and the policy decisions based on these. We are here to offer a change. The current academic publishing system values swift publication, novelty of findings, and statistical significance. This encourages research that suffers from implicit and explicit biases, as well as manipulated research. Despite its importance, <coughs> replication studies are not consider, considered prestigious work. In the race for novelty, replication studies are left by the wayside. Our proposal aims to change this. We propose a badging system for journal articles to shine a light on the rep, uh, reproduction status of a study. Uh, a study can be cast as one of three options. It can be successfully reproduced, pending reproduction, or failed reproduction. Badging makes reproducibility visible and provides a new incentive to address the crisis. It allows for a plurality of changes. It doesn't provide a quick fix, but it prepares the ground for sustainable transformation, allowing other policies to flourish. But how will we get people on board? We will build a coalition of support from funders, journals and academics. Funders will be our first target for recruitment. This is because they have the power to stipulate that their grant recipients take part in this initiative. We believe that once we get commitment from a key research funder, others will follow. Journals have been criticized for their role in the reproducibility crisis. By joining this coalition, they can reap the rewards of being on the front line of tackling this issue. We recognize that support from academics will be, serve as the foundation for this movement for reproducibility as a norm. They will play an essential role in advocating for the fortification and expansion of this coalition. We'll pilot this initiative in the psychology field as efforts to address the reproducibility crisis are already underway there. Once this model is established, it can be expanded to other fields of research with necessary adjustments. Some people may say this proposal will never get off the ground, but systemic change is possible. So let's compare this movement for reproducibility with the movement for open access. 20 years ago, people would have told you that widespread open access was impossible. <coughs> Journals were too powerful and would never agree to something that threatened their business model. And yet, the availability of open access articles has increased exponentially over the past two decades. Research funders like Wellcome and UKRI now stipulate that all of the research they fund must be available as gold open access. Change has happened. The open access movement succeeded by building coalitions and getting powerful players on board. Our proposal can replicate the strategy and its We believe that our proposal can replicate the strategy and its success. And what will the cost be if we do nothing? So one analysis in Nature found 60% of psychology research could not be reproduced. If these studies go unchallenged, they will go on to form the base of further research wasting time, effort, and money. This issue does not just exist in the silo of academia. It has impacts that expand into every sphere of public and private life. Scientific <laughs> research is woven into all the policy decisions made in the modern world. And if we want to have confidence in the decisions we make as a society, it's absolutely essential that we trust the, rely the research that we rely on. This proposal is an initial but crucial step towards normative change. By shining a light into the darkness, we can make visible the obstacles we must navigate as well as the potential paths forward. Thank you.